What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brooke. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. And today I've got with me... Evan and Caitlin! From Evan and Caitlin. <laughs> and they've been in my shop this week. We've been collaborating on a couple pieces. I built these Live Edge in tables with wireless charging built in. And they built an awesome Live Edge coffee table. Both of these feature a flat pack base that we did on the X-Carve CNC. And we're both really happy with how they came out. Yes. Yeah, so stay tuned. So before we get started with this build, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Chromebooks for sponsoring this video. Google sent me a Samsung Chromebook Pro that I've been using for the past couple of weeks, and it's been an awesome addition to my workflow, both in the shop as well as when I'm on the go. We modeled this project in Fusion 360, and it was super cool to be able to reference the model while out in the shop, especially with the touchscreen on the Chromebook. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's go ahead and get started with the build. I picked up this Live Edge walnut slab from a friend of mine and have been hanging onto it for a few months trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Unfortunately, the pith of the tree runs right down the center of this slab, so there was a decent amount of cracking and bowing I had to deal with, so I figured cutting the slab into a few pieces to make a pair of end tables would be perfect. There was an awesome looking crotch section on this slab that I'll definitely be hanging onto for use later, but I'm still not sure what I'm going to build with it, so if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments section below. I left the two end table pieces as one piece while I planed down the slab since they would end up at the same thickness that way and it would also help to reduce the amount of planer snipe I had to deal with. After planing the slab, I moved over to the drum sander just to smooth things out a little bit further but this really is an optional step. After getting the slab cleaned up, I noticed that some of the bark was a little bit fragile so I decided to stabilize it with some CA glue and this thin CA glue is great for this. It soaks right into the bark and then I could add some activator to make it dry super quickly. Next, I broke down the slab into two pieces and it's always a little tricky cross-cutting slab since you really don't have a good reference point for making the ends parallel. I like to use a framing square to mark a line and then I can reference off of that line for my second and third lines. I cut the slab using my track saw, which is really the perfect tool for this task, but a circular saw and straight edge would work really well too. With the slab pieces cut to final size, I could get started on the base of the end tables. And as I mentioned in the intro, this project was kind of an experiment in flat pack furniture design, which means that the pieces can all connect together without the need for glue, making it really easy to disassemble them later for shipping or moving. I wanted a chunky looking base to kind of match the top, but I also wanted something that was easy to mill on my Inventables X-Carve, so I decided to use two pieces of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood laminated together. First, I broke down the 5x5 sheet of plywood on the table saw, first ripping it in half and then cross-cutting one of the halves in half again, giving me two 30-inch by 30-inch pieces. Next, it was all hands on deck for the lamination process, which was a little more difficult than usual since I couldn't use brad nails as temporary clamps since they'd run the risk of being hit by the router bit later. A few well-placed calls and a bunch of extra weight helped to ensure that we got a really good glue lamination. After the glue dried, it was time to get to cutting. And the awesome thing about using one quarter of a 5x5 sheet was that it fit perfectly on the X-Carve. And before we get started cutting, let's talk a little bit about the design of the table base and let me show you how everything comes together. So now that we have it all designed, we can see how the joints go together. These mortise and tenons right here will plug into the top and this right here, when it's all assembled, it'll hold it. So when the weight is pushed down, these yep. are gonna wanna spread and this will hold it in place. So anywhere these joints connected, since a router bit is round, we had to add what are called dog bones. And these little areas allow the router bit to get in and clear out the waste, which essentially gives you a square corner that things can join together. And then we got your wireless charger. We modeled in the like disc of the charger itself, but then also where the power supply protruded. And we could do it out of any material really. Like you could sub in eight quarter lumber rather than mm -hmm. you know, double laminated three quarter ply. You can use the same leg design, yep, swap right. out the top yep, and it can be a, a bench stool. or a stool, yeah, <laughs> not yeah. a bench. <laughs> a bench for one. Not everything's a bench. Yes, everything's a bench. Now that you've seen how everything comes together, let's see how the pieces were cut on the X-Carve. As you can probably see on these first two legs, we were getting a ton of tear out on the edges of the plywood. And after struggling through those first two legs, Evan found a setting in Fusion 360 that was set as default to run as a climb cut, which is the opposite direction you typically want when running a router on wood. After correcting that setting, the cut quality difference was night and day, and the legs ended up with almost no tear out. You can really see the difference in the legs in the foreground versus the legs in the background here. 
luckily there was enough extra space on the piece of plywood that the couple of screwed up legs didn't force us to laminate another piece of plywood. During the cutting process, I used tabs to hold the legs in place, so I needed to cut the tabs to remove the legs from the blank after the cutting was finished. And I just used a 3 quarter inch chisel and mallet to do this, and it makes really quick work of the process. And after removing the legs, we were all amazed at just how clean they were right off of the X-Carve. Look at all those layers of plywood, so, so satisfying. So when using tabs for work holding on the CNC, you always need to remove the little extra bits left by the tabs, and the fastest way I've found to do this is with a flush trim bit at the router table. After removing the tabs, I switched to a chamfer bit and chamfered all the edges of the legs, except for the inside of the joints and the tenons. It's really amazing how much of a difference adding the chamfer made in the look of the legs. It really took them from looking like chunks of plywood to almost finished looking pieces pretty much instantly. Back at the X-Carve, I milled the center stretcher that connects the three legs out of a single layer piece of three quarter inch plywood. And once again, I used tabs to hold them in place. To remove the tabs this time, we decided to use a rasp rather than a flush trim bit since I'd already swapped that out for the chamfer bit and didn't feel like changing it back. And we had a quick ghost moment while rasping. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, this, this Instagram right here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cool. Next, I chamfered the edges of the stretcher, just like with the legs, and then we could finally do a quick test assembly. We realized we actually forgot to change the dimension of the joints between the stretcher and legs to be the actual thickness of the plywood and not just three quarters of an inch, which plywood is never actually three quarters of an inch thick. So they were a little bit loose, but they were still plenty strong enough and the base looked awesome. Next, it was time to cut the mortises into the bottom of the slabs. And instead of just going for it on the first try, we decided to run a test cut on a piece of plywood just to confirm that our spacing and sizing of the mortises would work. There's always a fine line between too tight and too loose when milling mortises this way, so it's really helpful to do a test cut here just to confirm your settings. And once the test cut fit nicely, it was time for the main event, cutting the mortises into the slabs, which went really smoothly. After the mortises were done, we could finally test fit the whole piece, and it was incredibly strong, even with no glue. I was really excited with how the piece was coming along, to say the least. Next, it was time to cut the pocket for the wireless charger, which I only built into one of the end tables. And this was a pretty simple operation, but I needed to pay close attention to the actual depth of the pocket so that the layer of wood left after routing was thin enough for the charger to work through, but wasn't so thin that the tabletop was too fragile. And we did a little testing before running this and found that the charger worked well through an eighth inch thick piece of wood, so that gave us our final depth for the pocket. After cutting, I test fit the wireless charger and it fit perfectly and most importantly, it worked. With all the routing done on the bottom of the slabs, it was time for the glue up. And while this base probably didn't actually need to be glued together, I figured I might as well since I don't plan on shipping it or moving it anywhere. So before the glue up, I made sure to sand everything thoroughly. And while I'm sanding, let's go back and talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Chromebooks. As I mentioned in the intro, I've been using my Samsung Chromebook Pro for a few weeks now, and it's really filled a void in my tech lineup. It's an awesome combination of tablet and laptop, and since I manage a lot of my files and my business and personal email with Google, it's super easy to access my work on the go. Chromebooks are perfect for taking to a coffee shop and working on my voiceover scripts, responding to YouTube comments, editing photos, or whatever I might need to get done that day, and its battery life and super lightweight make it awesomely portable. So if you'd like to learn more about Chromebooks, click the link in my video description below, and thanks again to Chromebooks for sponsoring this video. After the glue up, I needed to make something to hold the wireless charger in place. I just cut out a small block of scrap walnut to roughly fit the hole, leaving plenty of room around the edges for airflow, and then attached the block to a strip of walnut with CA glue. To attach the block to the slab, I added two inch and a quarter screws. And while this definitely isn't the most elegant solution in the world, no one will ever see it and it works perfectly. I also added some cable clips to the back of the back leg to keep the cable from being seen, and the charger installation was done. And with the charger in place, I could plug it in and try it out again, and it worked perfectly. While sanding the slabs, I noticed that they each had a good number of voids where the pith of the tree ran through the slab, and I decided to fill these voids with a little West Systems epoxy and was amazed at how much epoxy soaked into these voids. Filling these areas with epoxy will definitely help to stabilize these sections of the slabs and help to prevent them from cracking in the future. After letting the epoxy cure overnight, I came back with a block plane to remove the bulk of the epoxy and then smoothed everything out with 80 grit sandpaper. 
Finally, I gave both slabs a final sanding and used my air hose to blow out the edges of the slab, removing any loose pieces of bark. And I actually found this little guy hiding in one of the pieces of bark, so I'm really glad I removed those loose pieces. For the finish, I used a combination of wipe-on poly and spray polyurethane, both from the same manufacturer. The wipe-on poly worked great for the base and top and bottom of the slab, but the bark is really hard to get into with a wipe-on finish. So to finish the bark, I applied plenty of spray polyurethane just to seal everything nicely. I applied three coats of finish in total, and after that, the tables were done. This is uh, the workout program. <laughs> Live edge oh. gains. Oh God, God. Uh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, we're all super happy with the way these projects came out. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to Evan and Caitlin, go check out their channel. They do all kinds of really cool CNC, 3D printing projects, and they'll obviously have a video on this project as well. So uh, thank you all for watching. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos pretty much every week. Also, I have links to all the tools and materials I use down in the video description below. And last, I want to say a shout out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. All right, thanks again for watching, everybody. And until next time, happy building. I can't wave. <laughs> <laughs>